All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena and back to another historic brawl video. Today, I figured we'd go through some of the Crimson Vow commanders, and we're going to start with a pretty fun one, one that plays quite similar to one of my favorite commanders, which is Joda. Uh, this is going to be Jacob, uh, what's it called? Something Inspector? Jacob Hawken, Inspector. Two mana, zero, two. Legendary creature, of course. Uh, you can tap and draw a card, then exile a card from your hand face down. You may look at that card for as long as it remains exiled. And then you may pay six mana. If you do, transform Jacob, Inspector, into Hawken's Insight, which is a legendary enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library face down. You may look at that card for as long as it remains exiled, and once during each of your turns, you may play a land or cast a spell from among the cards exiled with this permanent without paying its mana cost. So the reason why I say this play is quite similar to Joda is there's two ways that you could play this card. You could either play it like Joda, where you put big bomb threats into play, which is what we're going to be doing. Or you could play it like uh, Baby Jace from Magic Origins, which is the one that if you get like six or seven cards in your graveyard, you flip it, something like that. You could play it kind of similar to that, uh, so that you get some like decent value cards underneath it. Uh, but that puts you down like Counterspell Tribal, and at that point you probably might as well just play Baral or something like that, which I won't be doing. So... Yeah, decided to go down the big bomb threat side of things, which is a lot more fun. So, we're going to get down Jacob as early as possible. We're going to try and protect Jacob with lots of protection spells, because that is our early game. It's basically the only thing we need to concern ourselves with. So we've got a few things we can do that with. We've got Dive Down, Spell Shield, uh, small counter spells like Swan Song, Wash Away. We've got You See a Guard Approach, which gives us hexproof. Cradle of Safety, Lazatek Plating, and Starlit Mantle. All of those are going to help us in the early game to keep our Jacob alive, because we want to just get to the point where we can pay that 6 and flip it over. So, the one important thing to note with Jacob is every time you do the draw a card, exile a card, uh, you're going to put a card underneath that, which means by the time you pay that 6 to flip Jacob, on the turn that Hawkins Insight is created you can play one of those cards that you've discarded to it up until that point so we're going to get some big spells under there in theory uh we've got this entire pile here which is the majority of our big spells it's the pile that we're really going to talk about so we could get something like an omniscience underneath it which means for the rest of the game we can play any card from our hand for free and then every upkeep we still get that draw to effect kind of with hawkins insight which is nice uh it is cast as well for hawkins insight uh so we can cast an ulamog and get his exile trigger as well as a 10 10 indestructible that exiles 20 cards you know pretty decent we can get jin cataxius which uh likelihood is when we play the Jacob and flip it we're going to tap out so we're going to go straight to our end step and draw seven cards with Jinkataxius if our opponent can then no longer remove it they discard down to zero cards uh, we can double our hand size with Seagate Restoration draw seven with Insight uh, Nezahal is just a control player's nightmare we've got Lay Claim and Imbolus's Clutches so we can steal our opponent's best creature because as you I may remember we've said that we're not in the early game going to be interacting much with our opponent. So once we've flipped the Jacob over, that's the time when we start to interact. So we can do like bounce spells with River's Rebuke. We've got Whelming Wave over here as well to do that. Uh, laying Claim, Stealing, Kiora, Stealing, all of that shenanigans. We can also just take an extra turn with Alrun's Epiphany and Time Warp as well. So we get that untap with all the extra mana to play around and then the extra insight trigger which could be relevant we can shut down planeswalkers we can play our own planeswalker uh made very sure that we don't have too many planeswalkers in here we've only got ugin the ineffable here uh, i used to have jace unraveler of secrets because that card's cool and it seemed like it might fit uh, but the moment you realize that you're on an immortal sun plan you really need to uh, pull back on the planeswalker side of things uh, we've got Shimmer Dragon, uh, which is really nice as well because it plays into the uh, early game ramp strategy that we're already doing. So it's a 6 mana 5-6 with flying, and as long as you've got 4 or more artifacts, it has hexproof. And you can also tap 2 untapped artifacts to draw a card. So our early game, uh, in addition to getting Jacob down and protecting it, is a ramp package of artifacts. So we've got like Ornithopters of Paradise, Mindstone, Guardian Idol, Cold Steel Heart. Arcane Signet, uh, 
and then loads of three mana stuff. Tried to get as many useful uh, mana rocks in here as possible, uh, short of the two mana ones which are just in here because they are two mana. Um, in the three mana slot you've got Venture into the Dungeon as an option on this mana rock. In this one you've got Graveyard Hate. This one you can redraw if you've drawn too many of them. This gives you a scry which sets up the insight. Uh, this one draws you a card and gives you life. This one is Snow Mana for Graven Law. Uh, you've got Kicker, so you can get extra copies. And then the Celestus, which is Draw and Discard, which is also very nice as a bit of life game. Um, but yeah, I think that's about everything I'm going to get into with this deck. It's, uh, it's pretty janky, to be honest. I think the matchmaking seems to have pitted it quite perfectly where it wants to be. Uh, it is a very linear game plan, but if you're into that kind of combo shenanigans, if you like Joda and things like that, then this deck is going to be up your alley for sure. Um, but yeah, the, the main game plan for us is to be getting Jacob down with protection, flipping Hawkins Insight with something powerful underneath it, making sure that you've got something powerful to put underneath it is also very important. So if you think Jacob's going to die, don't just shove your omniscience under Jacob, because if he does die, you, you've lost it forever. Uh, those are the kind of things that you're going to see today in the gameplay and something you need to concern yourself with if you do want to play this yourself. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. If you do, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this in the future. Without further ado, let's continue. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button down below or check out the Patreon link in the description. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. All right, we're up against T-Grid. This sound kind of sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Double tap land. And some useful tap lands at that as well. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to immediately take the free mull on this one. Just doesn't do anything good. Uh, this one protects. So I could do Sanctuary into Snow-Covered Island, into Snow-Covered Island, either Mana Geode or Jacob. We're up against a Mono Black deck, so... It's an interesting one, because we're up against T-Grid, which cares about sacrifices, so we could have some Edict effects uh, from our opponent, which obviously the dive down side of things doesn't really do anything. Uh, since we drew the other island, I think I'm going to wait on... Mystic Sanctuary, because this is three or more other islands, so... That does allow me to actually get some use out of Sanctuary, maybe put a dive down back on top or something like that. See where they want T-Grid to go. Five mana, four five with Menace. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card. Rude. Uh, well, I can... counter that, basically. Uh, so now I've got a token to play around Edict effects, which is nice. I think I'm just going to get Jacob down. It's going to allow me to draw and discard a little bit. I can dive down the first removal spell, Mystic Sanctuary back on while also protecting with spell shields. So I think we're going to be covered here. Shot of our opponent having like Blood Chief's Thirst or Fatal Push there. I guess Blood Chief's Thirst wouldn't have worked, but Fatal Push certainly would. Uh, right. I would like to go Mystic Sanctuary with Dive Down back on top. Play Dungeon Map. Actually, play Celestus. Uh, draw and discard with Jacob. Get Boon of the Wish Giver underneath. And swing. So we just need to dodge double removal spell, the spell here because Spell Shield needs me to kick, I believe, if, in order to get the hex proof. Yeah. So this is actually a two mana hex proof spell. 
All creatures get minus two, minus two. Well, gutted for you. Might as well kick it. Can we kick it? Yes, we can. All right, so we're going to do this, get the immortal sun under, I guess. Uh, let's save mana geode for when we flip Jacob, I think. We can go dungeon map, hold up and dive down plus Dwari's disruption here. Or I could play the mana geode. But yeah, I think I'd rather save it for the scry. We've got two good cards underneath there. Admittedly, but... If they just play the lantern side, which is target player loses three life unless they sacrifice some stuff. Uh, go blank. Sure. This one, this one. They know about the dive down. This might just be a concession here, though. Ooh, we even get Graven Law underneath there. Or Jinkataxius. I could take Jinkataxius. Alright, pay the six. And I think we're just going to go Immortal Sun for the first one. Yeah, I mean, the Boon of the Wishgiver is good next turn. Could also draw seven with Jinkataxis here, I guess, actually, so maybe that's better. We had guaranteed that end step trigger, so. Look at all that value. Discard two cards. Let's go Field of Ruin. And I guess Inventor's Fair. I think we've pretty much got this game locked up now. So basically, they can do whatever they want. They're gonna have to kill Jinkataxis, otherwise, they lose all the cards in their hand. But I've got a lot of free value under Hawk, um, Hawkins' insight here. Just trying to think, can I... I could technically scry... In order to set up Hawkins' insight there, but I think I would have to intentionally not use much snow. I don't even know if I've got enough non-snow to make that work, but... I won't really concern myself with it, because this game's extremely over. Um, just going to go with the Immortal Sun, cost reduce the cards in our hand, uh, play an Island, because we've already played Mystic Sanctuary, I don't think there's any other relevant card. Can do Discover the Formula to cost reduce the cards in my hand here. Swan Song's a nice one, and yeah, I was wondering when our opponent was going to concede. Guess we've just figured out it is now. So... If they tried to go after Jinkataxius, now we've got Dive Down ready to go. Uh, I wonder how... I guess this is a little bit of a non-bow with uh, Discover the Formula, but... I mean, the two cards are good enough on their own that I think it's worth the non-bow side of things. Uh, but yeah, we could hold up and Dive Down to keep Jinkataxius in play. We could play the Tome of the Infinite or even hold up and Wash Away to keep Tigrid in the command zone. Uh, we've also got Swan Song. So I would probably uh, extremely... <laughs> Become uh, extremely overpowered and winning this game. Uh, this is too much card advantage here for our opponent with zero cards in their hand. So, yeah, pretty sweet. And on to the next one. Alrighty, opponent goes first. And I think this hand is good enough. Uh, we can do, like, turn one cycle Boon of the Wishgiver to improve it a little bit, but ramp spell, ramp spell, gets us to Jacob nice and quickly. So, let's just play Blue Source, say go. This only bounces creatures, but could still be good. We're up against Lonis, Cryptozoologist. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control. Uh, yeah, I think I'm cycling this. We can do better. I mean, it's a good card to get under Jacob, but we don't have a protection spell for Jacob, so if he gets bounced, we're going to lose that card anyway. Um, question is, do I just play Jacob now? And I think the answer is yes. Turn some of these islands into better cards. Uh, so, Lonis says, whenever an untalking creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to investigate, which is make a clue token. You can pay two to sacrifice and draw a card. 
Uh, you can sacrifice X clues, and then target opponent reveals the top X cards of your library, and you can put a non-land permanent card with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. And then the rest on the bottom of the library in a random order. Um, Dwarish Disruption's an okay card to hit here. I'm just going to go Signet and turn one of these islands into a different card. Um... I think I'm going to go with Cold Steel Heart rather than holding open Juarez Disruption. There's a good chance that Juarez Disruption's useless. Um, and this gets me towards a Flip Jacob nice and early as well. Skilled Animator is going to turn one of those into a 5 5. So I could go with Whelming Wave here. This is probably a pretty good time for that. I'm turning a clue into nothing, basically. Set my opponent quite far back as well. So I can... Hedron Archive, activate Jacob, and Whelming Wave. Tails end. I like that one. Um, considering the amount of mana I've got, I think I'm just going to stick another island under there. I'm going to lose the cards that go under Jacob here, so... Let's just bounce everything back to hand. Give our opponent something to do with their turn. They've got eight cards in their hands, so they're not going to be discarding to hand size. But they can uh, get some clues back, and that well, looks like their entire turn, which is... Great in my books. Uh, I could steal their Lonis. But I think I'm going to just go for Jacob here. Um, do I want to hold up and disruption plus tails in? I think I probably do. Like, they didn't draw a land last turn, so I can set them quite far back by just, like, disruptioning this. Which is totally fine. Just make them pay one. They've only got one mana left to go, and they can just play an Ovira and pass, basically. Which is fine by me. I'm probably going to sack the Hedron Archive so I can get a better Jacob. I suppose I could have even Tails ended that trigger. Might have been really uh, a better line of play, to be honest. Ah, oh, Jinkataxius, lovely. Do I have time for Jinkataxius, though? With this board state. It's a 5 4. That's the thing, ain't it? I have one mana left open. I play this, I've got three, I've got enough, so I might as well play Honored Heirloom first. Negate, so stick Jin Taxius under. Play Imareth, I guess, and then I think I'm going to die. I don't imagine Jinkataxius is really going to do anything for us here. That's why I'm not going for the flip just yet. They're going to X5 me and get a Midnight Clock. Uh, do I trade my clue with the Imareth? I think because I'm on 10, I can't really afford to take much more damage here. If they play a big threat, that Symbolus' clutch is ready to go. Woodland Champion can get quite big here. So that'll be a nice steal. Look at that. Our opponent's just made a creature that's big enough to block the tracker for us. So let's draw a card first. Field of Ruin. Spell. 
spell shield. Okay, so I'm going to go Imbolus's Clutches underneath. Pay the six. Steal the five, five. Play Field of Ruin. And pass the turn. So we've played this deck on the past. It's a very different looking build to the one we went with. Ours was a little bit more of a combo focus where the treasures would uh, cost reduce for affinity. Uh, you've got a Kogler, I've got a Tail's End. Um, okay, mate. Goodbye. Um, so basically... Yep, they pass. I think I'm going to go Jinkataxis now. Um, we would get a 7 cost creature, I believe it is, and that would allow me to uh, neoform it into, um, what's his face, Crater Hoof Behemoth. Turn all of these puny little creatures into a big board state that wins the game. Apparently, I was drawing 7 cards, too much for our opponent, and uh, yeah, they got bored, I guess, of bored of losing. They should play a good deck, I hear that's fun. Alright, on to the next one. Alrighty then, we're in and on the draw. The hand I would say is not particularly good enough. It's not got a protection spell against the deck that probably has a lot of ways to interact with Jacob. And the mana rocks don't really accelerate here either, so I'm going to take the free mull. And we've got a Cradle of Safety. You know, if this was the uh, Zalfarin Void, I might have considered this hand. But because it isn't, it's just not going to work for me. And this looks much better. Alright, so we're going to keep this one. We're going to go down... I think just Shimmer Dragon. We haven't got enough uh, artifacts in play right now to make it work. And I think Nezahal's a good enough um, payoff for Jacob here. We're up against Tiamat. I think this card's like $100 in paper right now. Which is kind of silly. But, uh, you know, that's just Mythics and Magic the Gathering for you. Um... But yeah, it's a 5 colour with 2 generic on top of it for a 7-7 seven, seven with flying. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, search your library for up to 5 dragon cards not named Tiamat that each have different names. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. I imagine this has probably got expensive because there's an infinite combo with it, right? There's, um... What's the name of the dragons? There used to be like uh, Dragon Lord Colligan and something else. My uh, my knowledge of Commander is not uh, not great. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pass here and just cycle Boon of the Wish Giver. I don't really want to open up Jacob to removal here when I can wait a turn on it. Although, of course, this could just be a counter spell of some sort, but no double blue, so it limits their options a little bit. It's more likely to be conditional counters at this stage. Um, so I think I'd much rather just go like replicating ring here. It lets me know that our opponent doesn't have any interaction. So no stack based interaction. Our opponent's all creatures and sorcery, uh, sorcery speed stuff, which is really good to know. Uh, it also means that I have to spend less time protecting Jacob because if I get him down next turn, I could probably... Put myself in a position... That's not good. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is not a bounce spell. Add Sejoda. Plays very similar to uh, Jacob. I have somewhat lost my train of thought, I will uh, happily admit. But yeah, we spend less time trying to protect Jacob here. And if Jacob does die, we've basically accelerated past command attacks being a problem. So, no 5 color mana for Joda, which is nice. That's a Gilded Lotus. Not so nice. And Grim Tutor to get whatever card they want. My guess is it will be an answer to uh, Hawkins' Insight. Or perhaps it's actually just Omniscience, so that Joda can cast it. Why 
blue, black, red, green. Yeah, I mean, Joda is ready to omniscience. Well, we've got Pact of Negation, so now we don't have to concern ourselves with it. Um, I think that just means I'm going to go with Nezahal here. Since I can hold up and Pact now, I'll get a draw a card off of the Omniscience, which is nice. And I can protect from whatever our opponent wants to do here. But I think it is Omniscience. What else do you Grim Tutor for when you've got Joda? Chromatic? Orrery? Uh, I mean, yeah, fine. Ugin? Sure. That means that Tiamat is just seven generic mana now. Wandering Archaic? Uh... Sure. It's annoying to deal with, but it is something I can deal with. And Leyline Tyrant. Again, annoying, but something I can deal with. Alright, we haven't got long, so we're going to have to hope that the Insight hits something good here. It's just a land for the turn, and we draw an extra land for the turn, so I guess I'll just play a land. Uh, Kiora Bess's Sea God would leave me with one mana. I think that's fine. All the tapping is going to be really useful. This is not a uh, dive down or spell shield, so I can't give myself extra toughness to make a bad block for our opponent. Opponent goes with a Fracture. So I'm going to draw a card. It's a disruption I can't use. Uh, I am going to Pact here. Oh. Yes. Um, <laughs> that is how that card works. I forgot. Forgive me. Um, yeah, target creature gains Hexproof. I shouldn't have interacted with this, obviously. But they have to pay the five now, so there is that. Maybe that holds some value for me. There's Tiamat. ETBs gets five dragons. I really want my Welving Wave or uh, Rivers Rebuke at this point. That is a pile of cards right there. Here's Lathless. Yeah, I really need some Mass Bounce. Our opponent has not provided me with enough cards, and they certainly won't with their future cards as well. So we're down to nine. We're dead on board unless we can draw an exact answer. Three mana, what are you floating for? Oh, Leyline Tyrant. Makes sense. All right, we get to see two cards here. One is the Immortal Sun and the other is an island. Um, I guess I get to see an extra card. It's going to have to be good, though. It's another land. All right. Well, on that note, we will move on to the next game, I think. Alrighty, opponent goes first. We have a single mana rock. Uh, we've got ways to set up the top of our deck with otherworldly gaze. No interaction with what our opponent is doing, though. So is that worth... Throwing this one back? It is a three lander. I can gaze to find interaction, perhaps, or even just accelerate with extra mana rocks that I find. Yeah, I guess I'm going to keep this one. 
Bit of an odd one, though. But I think between Gaze having a turn 1, turn 2 play here, I think it's probably worth it. And there's Negates. Alright. So, instant speed Gaze. Should know that. Play this card actually quite a fair bit. It's not as bad as it might look. Alright. Huntmaster. The problem with Negate is it's actually not that good. Um, see, these cards are nice. But they're not going to help me. Maybe Baral's Expertise will help me. Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the Insight. Let's get the key to the Archive on there. Try and ramp into that. Let's throw Jake about. Let's test our opponent. Do you have removal? They're very creature based. There is a, a one mana dinosaur fight spell that they could have. Which is three mana if you don't have a dinosaur. Yeah, I kind of expected what our opponent's doing right now to be the scenario, but maybe less so what they're about to do. Please leave me alone. Uh, for the sake of one damage, I'm not going to let a little pump spell destroy my Jacob. So, they didn't remove Jacob. Which says to me, if they draw anything, it's going to be fight-based. So the 0-3 spell shield is going to be fine. So I won't really need to kick it. Let's go with uh, Midnight Clock here. Yeah, they've got something there. I'm thinking it's that plus one, plus zero, oh and draw a card thing. It's the one, the one card that's popping into my head. We'll end step Jacob. Maybe like even giant growth. Could be a few things, but we're going to see a big dinosaur here, which is why I like the idea of Baral's expertise. Charging Monstrosaur. And now Spell Shield's looking a little bit worse if they do have the fight spell. Uh, I'm going to have to take it. Am I going to be quick enough, though? They've tapped themselves out. The one thing that could be holding uh, priority now is... The Huntmaster giving haste. Okay. I think it's important to hold the spell shield rather than use it just to stop three points of damage, which is something I could just do next turn anyway. Uh, let's get rid of Negate at this point. And do I want to upkeep otherworldly gaze um i think the answer's no as much as i would just love a land here i can just get that off of uh, jacob on his own so then we just bounce bounce these three play a key to the archive or something if we got the land there could still get the land here. Fantastic. Right, so I'm going to go Shimmer Dragon underneath. Play my land. Play Baral's Expertise. Bounce, bounce, bounce. So all that goes back to hand and slows our opponent down. Hopefully enough. Play the key to the Archive. And then draft. Well, Doomblade seems like the only good one here. Let's go down. At this stage, probably the spell shield. Plating protects Hawkins Insight from naturalize effects, which could be relevant. I think if he's going to die, though, he's going to die real quick. All right. Good news is Shimmer Dragon blocks Monster Saw quite nicely. 
Another land. I think that's honestly like the greatest hit of all time. So I can do Hawken. Let's get rid of a land. Pay the six. Play Shimmer Dragon. Hold open Lapse Plating and Doomblade. I guess also Otherworldly Gaze as well would set up Hawkins Insight for the next turn. There's nothing good under it right now, so it would be nice if we could do that. I think we're going to have to play it in here, though. This is definitely a deck that has the cards to deal with my stuff. And if they go with the Brontodon, I'm happy with that. They sack it and I plating. Yeah, so that's a four mana do nothing there. Get a 1-1 one, one that I could block with if I want to, otherwise this is Monster Saw that can't attack through Shimmer Dragon short of a pump spell. Uh, I did want my upkeep stop there, but I forgot, and that could come back to punish me quite severely. Tap two artifacts to draw a card. Let's do that. Oh, wait, you're an enchantment. I thought you were an artifact. Uh, let's play... Zalfrin Void. Land on the top is now land on the bottom. I guess I am going to draw a card here. It takes me off three mana, but three mana draw a card's pretty good as well. Sandbar. Radiant Fountain, come on, lands. What are you doing to me? All right. Fine. Have it your way. So Brontodon was their best answer to Insight. That says to me they have no better answer unless they've top-decked one. Drover of the Mighty, couldn't care less. Huntmaster, couldn't care less. If they've got, like, Lightning Bolt here and they try to attack through to do some trades, I've got Memory Lapse to absolutely destroy them. Looks like that's what their game plan's gonna be. Snakeskin Veil? Nope. And I expect a concession right now. Uh, let's set up the top of our deck. I don't want any of these. Bin them all. Uh, I've got no way of scrying, so we're just going to let Insight do its thing. It's just replicating ring. Got Juarez Disruption. Okay, a little bit of a whiff there. Let's play the ring. Play the Radiant Fountain. Let's draw, leaving open the key so I can use Doomblade. Ooh, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Yeah, we've got Ulamog next turn. That's huge. Alright. Let's see if they can do anything here. Got Doomblade to answer any creature that might become a threat. I've got Juarez Disruption if they tap out. Couldn't care less about some ramp here. And I think that's just going to lock this game up once we get Ulamog down. We're almost getting a new hand with Midnight Clock as well. Which we could facilitate a nice little bit, a bit early. We can do... Ten, so it's eleven on my turn, twelve on theirs. Uh, which probably means I want to kill the Huntmaster. Because I can. And because it's going to get shuffled back in anyway. Probably before I could use it. Let's see what the Midnight Clock hits. Oh, sorry. The Insight hits. I've got a land at the very least. I've got two lands now. Spell Swindle. That's a nice one. Yeah, this is just going to end the game though. Um, can't knock them off of any colours. But I can put them on single red. I guess I'll hit these. These right here. 
This still leaves me with disruption mana. I'm going to get a brand new hand, actually, so it isn't going to leave me with disruption mana. <laughs> I think it's safe to attack in. Yeah, we get a brand new seven card hand with two mana open. So we got all the negates and the... I think you can do counter spell with this, right? Is it two mana in any combination? Yeah, so I could do... Um, Counter spell. I've got all the hexproof shenanigans. Uh, two mana. There's a lot on the two mana slot. So key to the archives. Just gonna probably keep me safe. Much more safe than Jawari subscription would be anyway. But uh, yeah, pretty good showing. And on to the next one. Alrighty, we're in and we're on the draw. Which can certainly make things a little bit more awkward, because I think this is just going to be a race to who flips Jacob first. And I guess to see what the payoff for that is. Um, I'm going to keep this one because it's got two mana mana rock. We're going to hope to draw a couple more though. Along the way. Spell shield, okay. So yeah, they get to play their Jacob first, which means they get to play it down without any trouble from me. Ornithopter of Paradise. Not really a big fan of that one. It's too easily killed. But I guess it is a two mana mana rock and maybe you can take the risk on something like that. I don't know. Not a huge fan of it, but here comes Jacob. If I had any interaction, this might be where I would try to make the effort to do so, but they've got two mana here, so that could be anything from negates to stop me from playing the game here. Uh, Dwarius disruptions, just could be like dive downs and spell shields though. I imagine they've got a very similar build to the deck that we have. Uh, because I'm not convinced that Jacob's going to stick on the battlefield, I'm not going to shove my most powerful cards under it just yet. I can do that when I go for the flip. Um, so maybe a future Jacob can flip the Omniscience for me. Uh, for now, I guess I'm just going to go Time Warp here. And to play around Disruption, let's go with Cold Steel Heart over Midnight Clock. My concern isn't too great for uh, Bounce Spells here. Like, two mana to replay Jacob's not a big deal. Two mana to replay Jacob into a Counter Spell, though, would be very annoying. So it's got Zalfrin Void. So they're one mana off flipping their Jacob. If they've got a good card in their hand, we could lose the game here. I think this game will often just come down to play draw. So card goes under. Difficult choice for them. Maybe they're also thinking about me unsummoning their Jacob and things of that nature. So card goes under. Can hit me for zero to send a message, but they're a coward, so that doesn't happen. So it's Res Canter. Pretty good one. So I've got five mana. I would like to go Midnight Clock here. She'll set up my Jacob flip. And I could do Search for Canter. Uh, but I think I'd much rather set up my Spell Shield. On the off chance that maybe Jacob flips into something like a Lay Claim or uh, Imbolus's Clutches. I can at least try to protect my Jacob. Flip my own, go Omniscience. Send it right back at them. I think it is. This game's going to end in the next turn, uh, turn or two. So, let's see. They're going to go for Jacob. I'm going to do nothing about it. So, do they want to pay the six? They do. I don't get a chance to interact when they go for the actual payment. I could technically bounce it. So let's see what one of these two cards is. It's going to be a Dream Eater, which is why we held up our spell shield. Uh, four, five, six. So yeah, no matter what they bounce here, if 
they go after Jacob, then they have a little bit of whiff potential there. If they go after the land, I can still play my land and flip my own Jacob. And win from there. They're going to need Pact and Negation for Omniscience, I guess. At this stage in the game. So they get to Surveil. They go after my Jacob. They do not have Pact and Negation. I might as well end step this now. Go Omniscience. I uh, play my land. Gonna stick Snow Covered Island underneath it, I guess. Pay my six. Play my Omniscience. Steal your Dream Eater. I could steal their Insight, actually. Maybe that's a better plan. But, yeah. As I said, this game is gonna end in the next turn or two. Just based off of if they got, um... Got a hand that interrupts my game plan, I probably lose. Uh, but if they can't interrupt my game plan, my Omniscience is going to win the game here. Uh, it's not an immediate win. I don't know what this card is underneath there. And they get a, a hit off the top. So personally, if I was them, I would play it out a little bit longer. But I get a Scry, I get a Search for Scanter, I get an Imrith. There's a lot going on there. So, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty powerful. But yeah, River's Rebuke immediately like shuts all of that down. So, again, I wouldn't concede if I were them, but it would be pretty much locked up if they didn't get the immediate answer and straight into garbage time, but pun disagrees. Either way, though, that's going to do it for today's video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed, and if you have, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for some more content like this in the future. If you want some extra content as well, do have my membership uh, program re-enabled, so uh, it's for three bucks a month. You get access to an extra video each week, which could be this one. Uh, it's probably going to be some historic brawl, I think. And you also get access to the full backlog of everything that I've released up until this point. So there is hours and hours and hours of content, which, uh, yeah, if you're interested, the uh, link is, I think, right next to the subscription button below the video. So, yeah, it's completely optional, though. And I just do, do appreciate you guys watching regardless. That is the biggest way to help out the channel. But, yeah, take care and have a wonderful rest of your day.